and supply chain uh, executives and managers and workers were the heroes of this pandemic. Several things that we learn about supply chain. The media, the general media, know very little about supply chain. The media tend to catastrophize everything, to make everything bad. Supply chain failed. Supply chain did not fail. In fact, supply chain, it was the best time for supply chain. For example, think about the food supply chain. From one day to the next, in end of February, beginning of March 2020, all restaurants were closed, all universities were closed, all industry was closed. So suddenly, half the food that was going to these places was not going anymore. Yet, by and large, nobody went hungry. The stuff kept going. People made a big deal out of it, and it was wrong. Big time. COVID has accelerated significantly the adoption of technology in general, and one of the main issue was robotics in warehousing. First of all, because robots don't get COVID, don't need to be vaccinated, don't need to wear masks. So they just work 24 seven, not a problem. Second, in the United States at least now, there's lack of workers. Uh, there are many more open positions than workers. So again, it's another drive for automation in general and particularly robotics in, uh, uh, in warehousing. And the thing with, with automation and robotic, it's not that it doesn't have mistakes, but you make the mistakes only once. I mean, you fix the algorithm and it's fixed. That's it. From this point on, there's no problem. If you think about preparation to begin with, you have to prioritize what are you kind of preparing for. So you can think about what's the probability that something will happen. And then if it happens, how bad is it going to be? And most people think that you have to prepare mostly for the stuff that has high likelihood to happen and it will happen, it's going to be bad. The most dangerous thing that have to be prioritized is things that do not happen a lot, but they have in a significant impact. This is like, uh, like COVID, like uh, BP explosion, like, um, you know, Japan, uh, a Japan disaster. Things that, who could have dreamed that Japan will not be prepared for earthquakes? I mean, my God, Japan, the, the country that's more prepared than any other country. The reason that it's harder to prepare for is because it didn't happen. Things that happened a lot before, even though they were bad, you know, you could drill them, you could uh, prepare for them. You know, it's never exactly the same as you prepare for, but you have the basic framework. Things that never happened before, you can only um, come up with general resilience. Resilience is a concept taken from material science, actually. It's the ability of material to retain its shape after deformation. Here we're talking about the ability of a company to bounce back to the same level of service, manufacturing level, uh, distribution, whatever, after some kind of disruption. Many elements from this, how to prepare for resilience. You have to uh, map all your uh, suppliers to know uh, where they are. You have to prepare ahead of time. What will you do if you don't have enough? If you don't get enough parts and you cannot give everything to every, to every customer, how do you prioritize customers? How do you centralize all the information and the decision-making? How do you make sure the decision-making is, is done well and everybody is doing his job? A good crisis is very good to find out who the good customers are, who the good uh, employees are, who, who the good suppliers are. Knowing who the good ones are, this is who you should bet on coming out of the crisis. And you should think about, do you still want to have certain division that didn't perform? Do you still want to deal with certain supplier, with certain customer? It's an opportunity to see who is, who is committed to you in the long term. One of the great things that happened is that it elevated the role of supply chain. Everybody now know how important supply chain is. They used to ask my wife, what's your husband doing at MIT? And he used to say, work on supply chain. They say, what is that? I mean, and now everybody says, oh, that's important. I mean, that's, 
just completely changed. And you see in companies, supply chain is elevated now. Even um, applications to programs, to, to graduate program in supply chain, to our program, but many other programs are increasing dramatically. People realize that that's an important and good career move uh, that you can, uh, because it kind of controls everything that happens uh, in the company from the supplier to the transportation to manufacturing to distribution to return the whole thing is supply chain another interesting thing that happened in supply chain while we're at it is it became it used to be just warehousing and trucking basically um, it's now a very very sophisticated profession and one of the metrics that we see for this becoming more sophisticated profession many more women in the profession. It used to be trucking and warehousing used to be a men's world. Now we're talking about computers and management and, and processes. And uh, we now have this, this year, we have 50-50 among our students, men and women. So it's great. It's great to see talent that was not even thinking about supply chain maybe 20 years ago, 30 years ago, entering the profession. It can only make it better. Another thing that happened is there was a much, much faster uptake of technology during the pandemic. Usually it may take, you know, months and years for a company to make a decision to buy some piece of software. This was, you know, weeks, you know, a month and, and things like that. Now, the truth is that many companies felt that they cut too much and they need a better, for example, legal review, and the contract were written quickly and all of this. So some companies have now committees that look at how can we do, do, how can we do stuff quickly, just like we did during pandemic, but not cut too many corners. Unfortunately, during COVID, we saw that there were trade barriers for vaccines themselves, for materials to make vaccines. Whenever there is a shortage, and the, the demand goes up significantly, uh, we will see countries that are starting to constrain how much can be, can be exported out. And this is really bad news for chips and other technology in particular, because the uses of chip in general is going up exponentially. Shortage of chip is, is a problem because it takes years to build a real cheap manufacturing plant. It takes years to build and it's complicated and risky. You know, I was talking once to a CEO and he said, let me tell you what risk means. Every few years, we dig a big hole in the ground and we put $4 billion into it. And we hope that there'll be a plant that four years from now, it will make what we hope it will make. We don't even know the science, if science can be there. We don't even know if we can make things like this. But we have to make the, the bet right now. I said, talk about risk, that's risk. Some of the challenge is to understand the technology. The technology is becoming better and can help us a lot, but there's a lag between the education of people to understand the technology, especially in supply chain. It takes time uh, for to get new people who get the right education and can understand you know, blockchain and Internet of Things and 3D printing and, and know where it fits and where it doesn't fit. Some of the mistakes that I see companies make sometimes is they buy technology without ever thinking what's the problem that you're trying to solve. Without supply chain, it means that uh, every there's no trade, basically. Supply chain enables trade because you bring something to somebody who needs it, so okay, so you already have a purchasing and distribution function, even if it's one person. They're in the old Babylonian, you know, markets. People came to the market, so there was there were merchants in the market who had to bring stuff so that they had procurement, they had distribution, customer came, they had to, to, to send it, there was transportation. So all the elements were always there. Without supply chain, we are back to every person for himself. You have to hunt, you have to build your own house, you have to do everything yourself. You don't take anything from, from anybody. So we're back to the stone age and it's, it was no fun. It's 
Supply chain enables the world to work, the invisible hand of the economy. If you think about supply chain, it's a chain of buy and seller, buy and seller, buy and seller, buy and seller of, of material and parts and products. And... So it's basically, you know, both buyer and sellers have incentive. If the link break between one buyer and one seller, the seller will look for other buyers. The buyer will look for, you know, uh, uh, other seller. They don't need a big orchestration uh, from above because every chain in the link has incentive to solve the problems as far as they can. The beauty is this, there's no brain. You don't need the brain. It's the system is the brain. That's it.